Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Okay, so I've been sort of like vague vlogging all week and telling you, oh, I got this, but I didn't get the second thing. And, you know, it's sort of like hinging and telling you, I'm not telling you what I got until I get it all together and test it, so on and so forth. Well, today, finally, I'm going to reveal everything. So, as you can see now, I got the Sony ZV-E10. And I also got the Sony 10 to 20 F4 PZ G lens to go with it. And it's also what I'm going to be using the Sony ECM B10 mic with. Here's the funny thing. I ended up getting the camera the other day and I started filming with it. And I was using the 14 millimeter G Master lens. So there was a bunch of footage that I ended up cutting out because holy crap, did that freaking thing focus breathe. It was it was driving me crazy. That was the sole reason I got the Sony a7 IV because it had that focus breathing compensation on it and I got spoiled with it because when I put that 14 millimeter G Master on this Sony ZV-E10, the focus breathing was maddening. I mean, absolutely maddening. I was sitting in my Forerunner, just sitting in the Forerunner like I always do. It's not like there's a ton of, you know, like I'm, I'm doing acrobatics and this, that, and the other thing. And it just, like, you could watch it focus breathe and, 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 you know, just do all that focus breathy shit that I hate. I've been filming with this thing all week. No one said anything. Nobody noticed the difference that I was not shooting on the a7 IV. Then, when I got the 10-20 to 20 lens, I immediately switched to it and started filming with it. Okay, so anyways, I got the lens, and I also got... Uh, I had ordered a Freewell UV filter. Don't want to hear it. I put UV filters on all my lenses. And then I also ordered the Freewell variable ND filter, just a two to five stop. I don't ever use the, the six to 10 stop ever. I already got those. So I got everything all hooked up. That's also why I got the PGY Tech little grabby ball head thingy so that I could start using the Mantis Pod, which it's on now. It's sitting on my MacBook Pro right in front of me, in front of the monitor. All of this goes together, and let me tell you something, I'm impressed. The entire setup is so tiny and light, but so versatile. Yay, Sony. Let's hear it for Sony. They did a great job. I got the 10 to 20, and this is after researching all the lens, because remember, back when I had my APS-C stuff before, I had the Sony 10 to 18 lens, and that had OSS on it. And that's what I was using for most of my vlogging, and I liked it so much that, like a dumbass, I sold it, I ended up rebuying another one. That's how much I liked it and regretted selling it. Then I got rid of all my APS-C gear for the full frame stuff, but now I'm starting to realize that when I'm running around and doing all this stuff, and you've heard me bitch and moan about it, when I go into Pleasure House Point with my birding setup, which is my A7R4 with the 200 to 600 lens, that's a big setup to carry around. It doesn't matter if I'm using a cotton carrier or a strap or if I have it on, uh, you know, my tripod or whatever. It's cumbersome. Now, if I want to film as well, it's a pain in the ass to carry that a7 IV around with, a, you know, a tripod and the 16 to 35 G Master lens. I mean, it's a big setup. Don't get me wrong. I'm not cutting it up. I love my a7 IV with the 16 to 35 G Master. It's fantastic, it's a fantastic setup, but it's just too freaking big. And the straw that broke the monkey's back was when I tried to put it into the Forerunner with this ECM B10 mic and realized there was absolutely no way that I was gonna get that in there. And I was like, son of a bitch. Well, I knew that at one point, like I was really tempted to buy one of these things and I held off on it and then after I had that problem with the setup in the Forerunner, I was like, screw it, I'm getting it. And then I researched all the different lenses because they had just come out with this 10 to 20, the 11 1.8, and the 15 1.4. And I was kind of debating on what to do. I thought to myself, well, I do have that 14 millimeter G Master lens, so maybe I can just use that. I'm super stoked that I ended up getting this 10 to 20. And now, as I always do, I researched that crap out of this. I watched so many ZV-E10 videos and so many 10 to 20, 11 millimeter, 15 millimeter, 10 to 18 compared with the 10 to 20 videos that it would make your head explode. And when it came right down to it, the 10 to 18, while a fantastic lens, is nine years old. It has old technology. 
There's nothing wrong with it, but I don't like to buy old shit when I got new shit to, to work with. The 10 to 20 F4 power zoom lens was the better buy for me because one, it's smaller. Two, it has the linear focusing motors rather than the older technology that the 10 to 18 had. And Sony worked some incredible magic, finally. I wish they would have done it on their G Master lens, but they worked some serious magic on this thing or sorcery, however you want to look at it, to make this thing have almost no focus breathing. And that sold me right there. As soon as I, the one video I watched, they were like, yeah, they did a really good job. Because you can't see any focus breathing or it's so minimal that it's not distracting. And I was like, done, I'll get the 10 to 20. So I'm thrilled that I got it, especially since I got the camera early before the lens and I started using it with that 14 G Master and saw how atrocious the focus breathing was. Ugh. Yeah, no way. This is a fantastic setup. And I was using it with a little Sony grip, but I have said in the past that I, in theory, that Sony grip is great, but in practice, it drives me crazy because that little hinge, like when you have the, the grip part and then the head, and this is where you mount the camera, and it, it has this play on it. No matter what you do, no matter how tight you make it, it has that play in it, and, and it just it drove me crazy. So that's why I ended up going back to my uh, Mantis pod, which I loved. The one bad thing about any of this shit is that none of these things have a built-in like battery grip or an, an, a, you know like an external battery that you can put on there. But I'm already thinking with my monkey brain that there's a way for me to mount an external battery on here if I need to. Now, I filmed today and I did all that box cutting and everything else before that and even into the rebuild of the Forerunner setup before I chewed through an entire battery. And then I got the second battery and I put it in there and I took that down to about 45%. So in the meantime, I have charged it up. I've re-put the brand new battery in here and, and I'm good to go. I'm gonna say comfortably that I could film anything that I film on a normal daily basis on one battery without recharging it or plugging it in at all. But that doesn't happen because anytime I get into the Forerunner and I put my camera setup in there, I automatically plug it in. That way I'm not using up any of the power and, and, and I'm getting more charges in between when I get out of, out of the Forerunner. So we're good to go there. All said and done, this Sony ZV-E10 with the Sony 10 to 20 F4 PZ G lens and the Sony ECM B10 mic is a perfect setup. Yes, perfect. Now, here's a couple of the, of the negatives. It's F4. You're not going to be getting 1.8. You're not going to be doing any of that kind of stuff, getting that really, really low light. And I don't give a shit about that, though, because I don't really shoot all that much low light stuff. And people have gone out, and you can look at other videos about this combination. People are able to get fantastic footage at night. Is it perfect? No, but it isn't meant to be. This isn't, you know, an F1.2 lens. You have to be realistic about what you're using and how you're using it to get the results that you want. It's perfect enough for me. There you go. All right. So that is a downside though, it's F4. So if you buy it, don't bitch and moan that you're not getting super low light from it because you're not going to. Second thing, stabilization. There is no in-camera stabilization in this ZV-E10. There's fake digital, meaning it cuts in. And when I say it cuts in, it cuts way in. That active stabilization, like it goes way in. Look at the difference. Look at how much that cut in. I'm still at 10 millimeters, but now I have active stabilization on. And I will tell you this, it's not that good. The, let's call a spade a spade. It's not that good. It does not have in-body image stabilization and the lens doesn't have OSS. You're just not gonna get that. But I will tell you this, but I'm not gonna tell you until I switch it back. Okay, back to normal now. 10 millimeters, no stabilization. What you've got going for you is Catalyst Brows. You know you've heard me bitch and moan about Catalyst Brows before, but you've also heard me bitch and moan about doing any extra steps in, in the flow of my editing, meaning no color grading, no audio fixes, no Catalyst Brows. That was pre this freaking MacBook Pro that I have. Okay, so I pulled some footage in and I was walking around the dealership yesterday when I was getting my maintenance done and I was hand-holding. Was it jittery? Yes. Although that seems to be coming back into style now because everybody's sort of getting over the whole everything has to be cinematic and gimbal-like and, and blah, 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 blah. And people are getting back to vlogging. But yeah. if you 
are filming. You put it at 10 millimeters. Instead of going 150th, you go 1 over 200, and that takes care of everything so that when you put it in the Catalyst Browse, you go to 90%, which means 10%, you're using 10% of the fix. It barely cuts in, and it looks amazing. Like, that program is amazing. It completely removes all the jitters, it stabilizes everything, and it gets rid of the rolling shutter. Catalyst Browse fixes it. I mean, there's nothing more for me to say. If you get Catalyst Browse, which is free, and you put your footage in there, lickety split, boom, cuts in, gives me, you know, that, that little bit of, of crop in, and fixes all that stuff, hell yeah. I'm going to wrap this up because I could go on and blather on for hours about this. I got a Sony ZV-E10. I got the Sony 10-20 to F4 PZ G lens. You already know I got the Sony ECM B10 mic. Couple all three of those together, throw them on a Mantis pod, and you've got yourself an amazing setup. I also have now perfected my in Forerunner setup. It's queen approved. It's perfect. Everything is just, it's all coming up Millhouse. It's all great. Now I have this tiny little setup that I can take. It's so light and so inobtrusive that I can just, I can take it with me everywhere constantly. And I'm going to be shooting like a mofo. So that was the big reveal. If you go back and you watch this week's videos, will you go back now and say, oh, okay, I thought there was something different. Or, or are you full of crap? It doesn't matter. Here's what we're using going forward. And I think it looks great. So I want to know what you think. I think I fixed the audio by setting the mic correctly. Now that I've coupled it with this new camera and lens setup, I think it all looks fantastic and sounds fantastic, and it mounts perfectly in my Forerunner, which is where I shoot most of the stuff that I shoot because I'm always in that damn thing. So that's all I've got for you. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe, and remember, kids, forward and up.